Thank you for joining us for our Lunch and Learn series. Today we have our University of Arkansas Police Department and their canine units with us. So we we're really fortunate to get the chance to uh, talk with them. And they're gonna tell us a little bit about what they do on campus to make sure everyone stays safe, what the dogs do, what their um, jobs are on campus. And then uh, at the end, we'll get to, if you'd like to ask some questions, we will uh, see, we will do some of that. So I'm going to turn it over to our special guests. Um, I am going to turn the laptop, so I gotta adjust it real quick. Um, but without further ado, here are our special guests. <laughs> All right. Got y'all. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey. My name is Hi. Settler. I'm uh, the sergeant over the canine unit here at the uh, university. And I'm going to let my handlers introduce themselves. Starting with uh, Corporal Ryan Barber. I'm Corporal Ryan Barber. Uh, my canine partner is Ricky. Ricky is the three-year-old Belgian Malinois. He's not present right now because we got all the dogs here. So it might be a little bit of uh, a tussle, I guess you can say. Uh, like I said, Ricky is our narcotic dog. He's also certified in patrol operations, so he does the handling protection, and uh, he can search for suspects that have left. I'm uh, I'm also Joe Copeland. This is my partner Oakley. Uh, she's just turned five years old. She's a Labrador Retriever. She is certified in explosive detection. Um, so like before games, football, basketball, baseball, all that stuff, we'll go in and sweep stadiums and uh, stuff like that. We also work with some outside agencies, but I'll let you talk about that in a little while. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Oscar Waller. This is my canine partner, Faye. She's our community outreach canine. She's a one-year-old gold retriever. Uh, we try to bring her around as much as possible. Uh, since the pandemic, we have absolutely got our steps in. We still try to walk around and let people see us and let her still get, uh, get a few outside running. Uh, I'm Oscar Kyle Pepper. I'm, this is my canine partner, Charlie. Uh, I'm the newest K9 handler with UAPB. Uh, you can tell Charlie's pretty excitable. Uh, we just got certified a couple weeks ago, so he is a fully certified, ready to go explosive detection dog. Uh, we've been mostly spending our long nights during everything, just walking around, getting play with campus, and seeing as many people as we can, trying to just get to know each other. All right. So I'll just kind of give you a, a, a brief rundown on kind of what we do on a daily basis. Uh, so we train these canines every Tuesday. Uh, we've started all our dogs since Leah, since my dog, who is also explosive detection patrol and is not friendly. So she's, that's why she's not here today. Um, we've started them all from puppies and we train them from a puppy all the way up to the time that they're certified. Uh, the certification process is fairly lengthy uh, for explosive detection dogs. They have to be certified in building searches, uh, vehicle searches, area searches, like an open area like a grass field or something like that, uh, as well as luggage, which is very scary for us because we don't search a lot of luggage. So uh, when we do, it's, uh, it's interesting to say the least. Um, every Tuesday, like I said, we come in, we do our training. We are, uh, we train for approximately four hours. We bring all the dogs in. We start with obedience because obedience is the foundation of everything else that we do. Then we'll move to odor detection. And, you know, the dogs are kind of like we are. Some days they do well, some days they, they don't do as well. Uh, for non-certification times, we try and hide them in very hard places to locate. Uh, for certification, they're almost always, uh, they're set somewhat simpler and they sit for a little bit longer so the other has a chance to spread out. Uh, what else, Joe? What else do we do? Well, um, we work with the, we work right. with the FBI. Yeah, all the, 
all the explosive canines. Uh, we work directly with the FBI. We're part of uh, we're part of an anti-terrorism task force called Arkansas Render Safe. So uh, we can be called anywhere in the U.S. to have our dogs go and search. Uh, anytime there's a sitting dignitary or a former dignitary, uh, any member of um, Congress or anything like that, we will actually go ahead and search venues, search motorcades. I uh, work with the Secret Service on that. Uh, we work with all the local schools as well. We, we go, we've gone just about everywhere in the state, it seems. Uh, if, if they have a bomb threat at the school, or if they just want to, you know, they we've done demos at, at schools all over the state. Um, I think Ryan works with the DEA. So every once in a while, we get a call from an outside agency asking for a high talk, and uh, we've helped, like Joe said, the DEA uh, one time. Uh, we've also done a lot of school sweeps, uh, gone to Farmington, out to Perryville. Uh, assisted payable, assisted VA, the VA police, and search uh, some of their buildings as well. Uh, so pretty much anybody who calls, we will go out and assist them with uh, our cameras. I know a lot of people will ask how long it takes to sweep the football stadium. A long time. It takes a long <laughs> time. It's, uh, we go in the night before the football game, uh, and we work till about 1 or 2 in the morning. Then we'll be here bright early the next day for uh, for when the crowd gets here. So the early games are a little more painful than the later games. But, uh, and, and when we sweep the stadium, it's not one dog. We have to break it up between three different dogs. And it still takes us a long time. And then we also have a dog that works the entry control point prior to that on Friday. So vendors bringing stuff into the stadium, all their vehicles get uh, search before they get up to the stadium. Uh, for the school itself, for the campus, uh, it, like Tara said, we've been doing a lot of walking and uh, and just kind of exercising the dog, introducing the dog to folks. Uh, there's not been a lot of folks on campus, so. Where do you all get the dogs when they're puppies? Someone has asked that already. Uh, so, uh, I like to be unique and get dogs from different, you know, we have a Dutch Shepherd, we have a Belgian Malinois, Golden Retriever, a Black Lab, and I have a Silver Lab. So I like to kind of spread the wealth. And, and the Silver Lab came from the name of the kennel? It was um, All, -Star, All, -Star. All Star Silver Labs in Arkadelphia. And um, we have we have their um, we have their um, Instagram linked on our Instagram at UAPD Canines. You can see uh, his Instagram, see all the puppies that have come from Charlie's litter as well as litters before, and he's even I think he even has some right now. And uh, yep, yep. We found Bay in Bayville, actually. She came from the golden the golden. Yeah, it was called the Golden Kennel. Also linked to our Instagram, you can check them out. See you can see, she's really nervous. <laughs> she's so shy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got Ricky from a breeder in Farmington. Uh, the name of breeders is still in my mind right now. But we got him at the Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah um, we got Ricky from the breeder who, um, I believe Ricky's mother was, she's very involved in, uh, in ships and in competition. Um, and they, they compete locally here. And Ricky's father, I believe, was in Kansas City. Mm, yeah, somewhere. <laughs> it was some, somewhere not in Arkansas, but it was, Ricky's dad was, he was also a. Uh, so the dual purpose dogs, Leah and Ricky, all the means that when we say they do control work is that they're, they do handler protection. So, they're, I guess for a lack of a better term, bite dogs. Uh, they'll bite a suspect and hold the suspect if we need them to. These dogs are all single purpose, being explosive detection. And I guess if you wanted to say they had a dual purpose, they're, uh, they're very friendly and they're, and they're fantastic ambassadors to our department. And if anyone asks, yes, they can bite, but I don't think they will bite. Yeah. They're more gums than bites. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 
Someone Great. has asked if they see the dog on campus, are they allowed to approach them? Great question. That is a fantastic Great question. Yeah, you can roll down this one. Well, <laughs> there's a general rule. If there's a 20 year dog, uh, you should really, you should ask all handlers before you talk about uh, who have approached the dog if you just pet them. But usually they are on campus, the 20 year dogs are not pedaling. Uh, so if you see us out and about and, and you say and you want to pet the dog, say, hey, is it okay if I pet? Um, if we're in the middle of searching, if we're in the middle of working, we'll we'll just say I'm sorry we're working and don't get your feelings hurt because sometimes we are in a hurry and we're trying to get somewhere important. But um, yeah, if we're not working, if we're not in the middle of a sweep, absolutely. Yeah, we'll let you pet them. They love the attention. Except for her. Especially Faye. That's one of the reasons why we try to walk as much as we can. Uh, clearly, you know, <laughs> we always She's ready to get worked out. <laughs> please, please always come up and ask. And uh, if you have any questions, that's kind of why, especially if Faye and me are out, we're always, if anyone has anything they want to know or ask, that she might want to play. Hi. So I train the dogs and uh, these two are in English. That dog is in, her commands are in French, and he and I, our dogs are commands in German. And there is no real reason behind that. Uh, most of the time, we import dogs when we get them, and they are started in Czechoslovakia and German. So rather than reteach the dog, because you can teach them in any language, uh, rather than try and reteach them, we just go with what they started with and teach the handler the, the, the commands in the language. We have another question. It says, um, what kind of new protocols do you see, if any, um, that are being needed to deal with COVID and stuff like that, if there are any? Oh, well, that's, that's, that's a good question. Uh, we're still playing that by ear. Yeah, we're kind of waiting on the station to give us guidance as well. But I mean, obviously, if they keep the social distancing rule all the way to the time school opens, that is definitely going to be, uh, it's definitely going to have an effect. And, and I'm not sure that we can constantly follow it, but I'm sure that they'll do everything they can. Do you ever do public training with the dogs? We do demos. We do a lot of, uh, we'll go around to schools and we'll do them on campus where uh, we can get a group of people. We do a lot of dorms as well, where we demonstrate what our dogs are capable of, how the training operates, uh, and just let the public see everything that our dogs can do. Yeah, if anybody wants a demo or, or you have a group of people that, uh, that want, to, uh, want to see the dog, want to see what the dogs do, you can always schedule that with us at uh, UAPD Canines with the S. Um, okay. yeah. work, yeah. Yeah. What kind of training do you all specifically have to do in order to work with canines? <laughs> uh, I've, I've gone through a lot. <laughs> I, I did this. Uh, I did this part time kind of in the military, uh, and I've been doing it. Uh, I started canine unit here along with uh, Officer Chris Crodell, who's no longer with us, but uh, he and I started the program. Uh, these guys here have all gone through, uh, well, I, I train them, so I'm not sure they want to go through that training again with me. <laughs> Although I was super nice uh, the entire time. I don't know why they gave me a hard time. Yeah, basically, for us, we have to learn, learn the dog's commands, learn how to work with the dog. Uh, that takes a long time to to learn, I mean, to learn how to do because you and your dog are a team and uh, learning to trust your dog and, and when you ask it to do whatever it is it's supposed to do, trusting that your dog is trained the right way, uh, which, you know, if we did our job, then they are trained the right way. Um, and uh, that's, that's and the they, basics. Then they go through a first aid training for the canine, obviously, it's yeah. not out. Sometimes we'll be out in the middle of uh, Nowhere. Uh, we're not going to have time to get the dog to the vet. 
if something happens. So they're trained in emergency type associations with a canine. Uh, believe it or not, one of the hardest things to learn with a canine is leash control. Uh, especially if we learn our searching things. Uh, not getting yourself wrapped up in the leash, not wrapping your dog up in the leash. Uh, it sounds super easy, and it's not. Uh, I would like to invite everyone to the next time I have a new hamper. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see it's not easy, and you'll have a good laugh because they'll wrap themselves up. And sometimes they trip themselves. It's uh, it's very interesting. But uh, picking up on the nonverbal cues that the dog gives you is is the hardest part. Uh, sometimes when you go by an odor, the dog smells the odor, but may not immediately sit on that odor. And we train the dogs, all of our dogs have been trained for uh, a passive alert, which means they just sit and stare at the odor. Uh, active alert is a scratch dog with a scratch at the odor. Uh, we didn't think it would be a good idea to have a dog scratch things, especially bomb dogs. Uh, so they're all trained for a passive alert, but if you pass an odor and the dog doesn't sit immediately, the dog is still going to give you a clue that there is an odor there. And it's their job to pick up the nonverbal cue that the dog gives them. Hopefully he's trying to steal the show here. Hopefully I was trying to explain something. I, I can say from a training standpoint, I'm the newest guy, like I said before, and I've been with Charlie for about four months now, or coming up on four months, and every week is still a pretty intensive learning experience. You know, every week something new, some good weeks, some bad weeks, you know, some things just never realized. So it's, you know, I went into it cold, and I didn't really know anything about this process, and it's been very eye-opening, just how intensive, how much time and effort, both when we have training days and in your own time, that, you know, you're new at this, the dog's with this, it really just never stops trying to get Used to him, then used to me, and everything in between. To piggyback off that, I work with these dogs pretty much 24 7. There are women at home, uh, mine cuddles with me in bed every night, but he's all the time outside. And so the training never really stops. It's, they're always having to progress in their training. And so when we go home, like for instance, feeding Charlie, he has to sit or lay down before he gets his food. It's, every single time. It's a, it's a process that just never stops. So, Selections never any problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you all when? Uh, let's see if we have to. Let's go. What do the dogs like to do when they're off duty? What about Same. you guys? Please speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Like, uh, like Corporal Barber said, these dogs do live with us. They go home with us. Um, some of us have dogs at home. I know Officer Pepper has uh, two dogs at home. Corporal right. Barber has a dog. I have two dogs at home. Uh, Officer Tara, he's the only one that doesn't have another dog at home. So when they go home, um, they're they're part of the pack, and they just kind of they kind of want to sometimes just want to play with their their housemates, their siblings. Um, sometimes she just likes to lay around. She likes to go get her, call her zoomies. She likes to run her laps in the backyard with our other dog. And then she wants to come inside and lay on the dog bed for hours on end until it's time to eat. So that's, that's her favorite thing to do. So kind of to go off of one of the earlier questions about how we pick the dogs or how we select the dogs. One of the things that I look for in a dog is it's, uh, we need a hunt drive. So the hunt for the explosive. And I, I want a ball drive. So uh, you'll see if anybody brought a ball with them. Or uh, these dogs love to play ball, uh, and we build that drive and we make that drive even stronger than it is. And the average dog. I mean, the pay, this dog's paycheck is to get a ball. So you can imagine. I mean, it, they're very driven to get the tennis ball or a tub toy, whatever, whatever we use. So uh, that's and that's also one of the ways we select the dog. We love that, so. Do they work together often, or are they usually the, on their the, own? The bomb dogs will walk in a room, one right behind the other, which is an amazing thing because, like I said, Leah does not like other dogs. She does. I think I'm one of the few people Leah actually accepts. But uh, and they will walk in a room, one right behind the other, and not think anything of it because they're doing their job. 
And when you see the dogs working, it is so much different than seeing them in a, in a normal environment. Uh, you can tell they know they're at work and they know they're getting ready to go to work when these guys get their uniforms on at the house. The dog's behavior changes, it knows it's not to work. So, this dog, you know, we have our training Tuesday mornings, and I swear he knows a calendar. Every Tuesday morning, he wakes up earlier, he's more excited, and pretty much just can't wait to get to work and just start doing his job. He looks forward to it. And he's only like that, only that excited on Tuesday morning. Every day of the week, he's pretty <laughs> classy. <laughs> yeah. So the number of students that they trace at the university, is, have you increased the number of dogs you have because of that? Or is there another reason why you've gotten more dogs as the time is gone? Well, I, I, the number of students certainly affects uh, the number of dogs that we've had. Uh, but really what, what drives is just the demand for the dogs. And it's not just from the university. Uh, during political season, which is coming up, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> there will be a tremendous amount of Secret Service calls and they'll, hey, can you do that? And sometimes to do, like, for instance, uh, President Clinton, when he visits, and he probably does his most. Uh, it takes at least two dogs. We're going to have a dog at the airport, and then we're going to have a dog sweeping the route that he takes and the hotel that he stays at. Uh, all that has to be done prior to his arrival. Uh, so uh, it, it's more the demand for the dogs has gone up. Yeah. So what about, you mentioned President Clinton. I, the Dalai Lama visited here a few years ago. Was that quite a That was very speech? intense. That was very intense. In fact, uh, we had, we borrowed dogs from other agencies for that one. Uh, I didn't realize there were that many threats with the Dalai Lama, but there are. And uh, he, I don't want to say he almost built Bud Walton, uh, at least the seats that were available. Yeah. So yeah, we brought in several bomb dogs and did a lot of, a lot of extra work with the Dalai Lama. Do y'all work with the Fayetteville Police Department and yeah. their payments? Ab absolutely. We train with all of the local agencies. Now, most days, uh, you know, the only other agency that has a bomb dog in the area is Bentonville. Now, I want to say there's about seven or eight bomb dogs in the state of Arkansas. The University of Arkansas owns three. So, uh, that's kind of cool. Which is, which is another reason why they're in such high demand. There's so few. Um, but, yes, uh, we'll work with any department. And we train together, and it's you know it's more of a bonding experience sometimes than it is a training experience because they're working explosives. Now Ryan likes that because he's getting you know all kinds of explosives or all kinds of narcotics and stuff. But uh, uh, for us, you know, nobody else has explosive dogs, so we're kind of we're kind of unique. Yeah. We got to work with Abel and. Uh, Annie Hopkins and Huntsville and Madison County. Uh, we get a big sweep of a bunch of uh, the schools out in Madison County and Eastern Washington County. And it was it was nice to get to hang out with the Washington County, the Fayetteville, the Madison County. It was it was cool to get all that training. It's different experiences, and that's really what that's all about. Is is talking to the handlers about hey, you know, if you've done this, if you run into this. Uh, especially in the narcotic world, uh, things are changing. Yeah, he went to a, uh, a class called uh, Desert Snow, and in Desert Snow, uh, once you graduate the class, they get a special log in where they can log in, and if they run the dog on a vehicle, and everything says this vehicle has drugs in it or narcotics in it, um, but you don't find anything, they'll log that vehicle. And they'll say where their dog might have showed interest or not showed interest. And if that vehicle is stopped again by somebody who's, you know, gone through the uh, interdiction classes like that, uh, they'll they'll know, hey, you know, there's something something's going on with this vehicle. So it's a very informative class that showed me a lot of I thought I was searching vehicles good. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they showed the, I mean trap doors and how to take cars apart and stuff like that, put it back properly. Uh, it, was, it was a very 
awesome class for them. It definitely helped me with having a canine partner. Yeah. Yeah. So you touched on it a little bit, but when you talk about like a typical day when people are on campus, what the dogs would do if there is a typical day. Um, <laughs> I don't, I mean, do they sweep for bombs every day, um, things like that? No, I would say a typical week for Richie. We might get a call out or, or like a fatal, they'll, if they don't have one of their dogs on, which are, it's, their dogs are trained in some other stuff, so there's a lot of nights where they don't have a canine available. And so he'll go to assist them on a traffic stop or something like that. Uh, other than that, we'll do some stops here on campus, I might have one. Uh, but he's a very loud dog. He's a very loud partner. Uh, if there's a, a vehicle, a police car from U of A passes you at night, and it's very loud, and there's dog barking, it's 99.9% .9 ready. Good point, or one step. Yeah. <laughs> he's my uh, little personal uh, alarm system. Nobody can come within 10 feet of my vehicle without him yeah, giving We call it giving him business. Because he's going to sound like he's the meanest dog in the world. What, what does a typical day look like for you? Uh, yeah, when like students are here, I mean, we try, a lot of the places that we stayed were in the Union, we'd go to the Connections Lounge, and we would just hang out uh, and talk to as many people as we could and answer questions, but we try to just get out and walk around and meet as many people as we can. Yeah, for, for Oakley and I, uh, yeah, we, so all of us still have our patrol duties, so we're still we're still out um, making contacts. If we see traffic violations, we're stopping those. We're still doing all of our police work. But on the dog side of things, um, typically when the students are here, um, you know we're we're trying to walk around a little bit, uh, be seen, walk into some buildings. Um, the students love seeing the dogs and. Um, Oakley was the first dog, that, the first lab that we had, so she kind of got a bit of a following, um, and so we're trying to we try to kind of foster that relationship between students and, and the police. Um, but a lot, a lot of just walking, a lot of saying hi to people. Uh, we really, it's kind of the same with Corporal Barber. We really don't get that many bomb calls a day. Um, I'd say probably. And people probably hear about it when we do. Yeah, usually, yeah, yeah usually, on the news. if you see something in the news that there was a bomb threat, you were likely involved. One, one of us is probably involved in that. Cool. Okay. We have another question. Have you had to apprehend anyone ever with a canine? And <laughs> did you train them for that to apprehend people? So, the dual purpose dogs, uh, Leah and Ricky, they do uh, search for uh, suspects that have come from police. Uh, I've been called out on two uh, searches. Uh, it was not a very, uh, they didn't really know where the suspect ran. And so it was difficult to start, hey, let's work this way, and then he could have ran that way. So uh, I think Sergeant Shepard has done a lot more tracks than I have. He's been on a track with me, from a guy that flipped with me. Uh, and it's, it's really cool to see the dogs. Uh, when they get their nose down, they're actually going it's cool to see for and then since they are bike dogs uh we wouldn't use the other the labs because if we do end up finding that individual that fled we don't want them to be hey go look them right. <laughs> uh, one of these series luckily at the university we haven't had to use the dogs after anything uh they are trained for it ricky and me are both trained for it um so we try and stay away from the bike suits and the, and the bike sleeves now because it's kind of like it makes it it's like a big chew toy and it kind of creates as many problems as it solves uh we know our dogs will uh so probably once every couple of months we'll put a bike sleeve on the, the bike but um thank goodness i mean just the threat of a dog a lot of times bite somebody is enough to stop a suspect uh, at least make them think twice. Uh, they obviously can outrun me. They will not outrun my dog. I promise. He's very fast. <laughs> to, to, to answer the training side of it, you know, they said they are training for it. We, uh, I actually went and learned how to be a decoy or the person that gets bit the most. Um, so, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've practiced that quite a bit. But like you said, thankfully we've never had any of that. 
So you all have to have training to be in D cores for sure. practice. Yeah, you, because you have to. But it's a real good idea. It's a good idea. <laughs> so you don't mess the dog up. Okay, cool. We have someone who asks, what if someone wants to become a canine officer? What is the steps that we should take to do that? <laughs> Becoming a police officer is probably the first step. Uh, you definitely, you're going to be a police officer for a while. Um, most departments, you're going to be there five, maybe even ten years before uh, canine's clock comes open. Uh, just because once you become a canine handler, most guys, most guys don't want to leave that. Um, most people who become handlers, they fall in love with the craft, and um, it's just. It, it's hard to get it's hard to get a handler out of being a, a handler, but step one is becoming a cop, and then step two. In <laughs> you, have, you have to show a desire. I mean, once once somebody's in the department, all of these folks came to training before they were ever canine officers. They spent their own time, and some of these work mids. So I mean, they were tired when they came into training just to watch and see what we do and help in any way that they could and i mean they showed the desire for it so once they go into say interviews and things like that when we ask something about a dog and they're like oh yeah i worked with that dog last week and here's what they did uh, it obviously shows our command staff and, and everyone that they have a desire to do this yeah. uh, because it i know it seems easy but it's really difficult you're you're basically working 24 hours a day. If your dog is sick in the middle of the night, it's just like having a child. You're up with that dog. So uh, you are, you're never really on vacation. If they do go on vacation, the dog has to be, usually they'll kennel it with me or with another handler is our rules. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the confirmation of things. Um, so, uh, it's, it, it is a difficult job in that it never ends. Yeah. It's 24 hour day. Patience is the virtue. <laughs> got it, Rachel. And you got to, like you said, you've got to be willing to be very dedicated in time because that's, that's probably the biggest commitment we have. Other than having a dog in your house that's not technically your own dog. Um, that you are responsible for, but there's so much time commitment. I mean, you just, and your family has to be on board too. I mean, if you've got family, it's a time commitment for them too, because they have to not see you or not see the dog at certain times, and they they have to truck along with you. So it's it's a lot of time commitment for everyone. How many canine officers has the UAPD had since you started the program? Eight. I'll say it's going to be eight because the ones that have left would be DJ, Chris Crowdell, yeah. and yeah. Owen. Oh, yeah, so yeah, eight. Yeah, we got eight. Do you plan to add more? Well, that's not a question. <laughs> that's not really me. And if it was up to me, every officer would have a dog because just, you know, it's like with Tara's dog, you can see people change. You know, a student looks at us and they're like, police officer. You know, and they're, they may not hate police officers, but they're weary of police officers, you know. And, uh, but when they see a police officer with a dog, that completely changes. They come right up to the dog, and then they start to talk to the officer, and they're like, oh, this guy, this person's human too, you know. So uh, it, is, it, it breaks a lot of barriers. So I, every officer I would have with the dog, but uh, keep it up with the training is kind of tough. And that's another thing, you know, we, we allow people to come to our training as well. Uh, we're not hiding anything, we're not, there's no super secrets going on on Tuesdays, you know, where we're like, okay, don't tell anybody else, this is how we do it. Uh, anybody that has a dog and wants to join us for training, can come down any Tuesday, uh, try and get a hold of us first, so you make sure we're going to get the track. Uh, but we'll work with your dog, we'll work with you and your dog. Uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely, uh, I would have 20 dogs in the department if I could, but uh, the, you know, they do kind of get expensive. Maintenance-wise. Uh, Maintenance-wise. Uh, bills. Bet bills. Ooh. 
And our food is sponsored luckily through uh, Dog Watch. Dog Watch. Yes. Huge thank you, Dog Watch. If yes. anyone's watching, go yes. to Dog Watch. Uh, they've got great food, very high quality food. These dogs are like um, pro athletes. They're expected to perform at above normal levels a lot more often than a normal dog. <laughs> yeah, just like their hand. <laughs> So they have some very high quality food, very, very good quality food, and Dog Watch takes care of us. They actually donate the food for all their dogs. Um, so huge shout out to them. And I believe they donate for the food for the dogs. I think they I think they do, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah. So recently y'all did a video where you had Oakley with the GoPro. Is that mm -hmm. something that you might do with any of the other dogs? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was just kind of an experiment, kind of a fun thing. We slapped it on her, um, on her harness, and just kind of let her walk around. So it's kind of a, a dog's eye view of dog's eye view. dog's eye view of what you know daily life is like. I'm I'm sure. I mean, ultimately it's up to him, but I'm sure we could do something like that again. That I think that's probably pretty cool. And now that we have more dogs that are petable and friendly, I think that'd be a really good idea. Yeah. So, when dogs get older, do they get to retire? How does that work? Where so, do they get older? So, normally we retire the university dog from their eight year old. Because bigger dogs' lifespans are usually going to be 13, 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we want them to enjoy their retirement age. Uh, so we normally retire at eight. Now Leah, her body frame and everything is a little bit different. Uh, she's nine now, and I'll probably work her for about another half year to a year. Uh, and then we'll uh, have to talk to our chief whether or not we can replace her. Because normally these dogs are, so for the single purpose, like Oakley and them, they're, they run about $16,000 uh, for a dual purpose bomb dog, which is, Highly in demand, they're about twenty thousand dollars. So, like I said, we buy them as puppies. Generally, it costs us about a thousand dollars to buy a puppy because uh, I know a lot of departments do rescue, and I think that's wonderful and it's a fantastic idea. However, for me, because they're exposed to so many people, and we're walking around with football, I like to know a little bit about the background of the dog and the parents were, what their temperament was, things like that. So uh, we buy ours from uh, established breeders. What does a dog do in retirement? No. No. <laughs> Just what I'm gonna do when I retire. Sit around and be lazy for a while. Does the handler get to take them home so they retire have, with have, their hands? Absolutely. They're given the opportunity to purchase the dog uh, because they belong to the university. They actually have to be Purchased, especially Ricky and Leo being trained to bite, uh, to remove the responsibility from the university to the handler on a bite dog. It usually is like uh, 10 cents or a dollar or something. It's, it's ridiculously low, but yeah, they're, they're offered to the handler. Awesome. Um, do the dogs ever bicker with one another? Yes. That's why Ricky and Leo are not <laughs> So they're like siblings? And yes, they always are. So these two were fine for a little bit and then they're not. But these two right here, they are two days apart. Yeah. And so every time they get together, they play and play. Oakley has played with Charlie a few times because he's a puppy and so they got along really well. Um, Ricky and Oakley get along pretty well because we had Ricky when he was a little puppy and they played a lot. But Leah doesn't like any dogs. So Leah doesn't get to play with anybody. Um, and, and like she said, for some reason, these two just, they used to clip. Uh, I think I posted a, a, a picture on Instagram of them hanging out together. They were playing. Life is great. A week later, they do not like each other. I, I don't Maybe they just get moody. I don't know. But um, sometimes we can let them play if, if you know the dog, you know the, um, the temperament and how they interact with the other dogs. We can't let them uh, interact, but yeah, bickering happens. Yeah. There's a lot of barking. What I thought was funny is uh, one of the dogs that retired, Tori, who was an all black German Shepherd, he was dual purpose uh, patrol and uh, explosive detection. And Oakley here, <laughs> every time Tori would come in the room or wherever, she would just lock off and just stare at him down. She didn't like 
It's like she didn't realize what Ori was capable of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Ori, Ori was probably 25 pounds heavier than her. He, uh, he was a big dog. And she hated it. Every time he walked in a room, she would just stare at him. Like she was, like, like was going to do something. I'm like, you realize he's a big dog, right? Let's not do that. See, I think she's a little tougher than she, or she thinks she's tougher than she is. So. Well, we've had a lot of people request, and this might be a good way to end out, um, if you would demonstrate some of the commands. So, if you want to try that right here. Yeah. We can yeah. take turns. Yeah, we can take, we can take turns doing that. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. A, just a few, and we'll just we'll wrap it up with that. Okay, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a bike though now. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, uh, okay. so uh, pretty much what, what we always like to start off with is healing. If you tell your dog to heal, thank you. If you want your dog to stay beside you when you're walking around campus and stuff. Um, so, yeah, opposite side. So I, I shoot my gun right handed, so I keep my dog on my left. So, therefore, if I ever do have to use my weapon, my dog's not getting tangled up in that. Um, so, when we're walking, we'll tell them to heal and stuff. Um, we should. Since there are other dogs in here, I'm not going to take her off leash, but normally we can do all this stuff off leash. Um, we'll walk around, we'll tell her to heal, I'll tell her to sit, and she'll sit for me down. There she goes, she lays down, I don't know if you guys see her. Yep. Um, and, and honestly, you should be able to tell your dog to down and walk away. We'll try it, stay. So I can walk away, um, and this is really handy for if, uh, let's say I'm typing, if I'm typing a report or something, and um, you know we're at the squadron, um, I can tell her down. I can walk away. I can focus on what I'm doing, and she she won't get up. Um, and then we'll recall her. You got a handle on him? You can if you want to back up this little. Okay. So whenever she he's gonna, he's gonna back up right there. Okay. Yeah, I'll call her. I'll call her too. Yeah. Here. Good. Good. Yes, there. Good job. Yes. Good job. So when we recall her, she always comes around my right side and sits on my left. That's just what we trained her to do, and that's what she does. Good job, kiddo. That's my girl. And luckily, I haven't had any handlers that were left-handed or shot left-handed, so I haven't had them. But you can train the dog to heal to either side. <laughs> it would mess me up to have a left-handed. Left -handed. Yeah, I'm left-handed, but I shoot right-handed, so you got lucky there. <laughs> Alright, do we want to wrap it up there? Are we good? Alright, do does anyone have any last minute questions? You're welcome to put them in the chat here. Anybody? It doesn't look like it. People have been asking all through the day, so. Oh wait, one more. Oh, we have a thank you. So, we do want to thank you all very much. and. Um, we do have a special project coming out with our dogs soon. The Arkansas Alumni Association and the University of Arkansas Police Department and our dogs, we have a special project coming up with them where we're going to have our dogs um, reading different books to people that they can watch with their kids, watch with people, watch with their own dogs. But our wonderful officers, they've been reading and recording themselves reading books with their dogs. And we're going to be um, launching that program soon. It'll be our Hogs and Dogs Reading Club. So we're excited about that. Um, the dogs are also excited to learn to read too. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but we are really excited about that. We want to thank you all for getting that too. But um, other than that, I think we are going to wrap it up here. We want to thank you all so much thank for um, coming you. today. And if you know anyone that didn't get the chance to tune in live today, we are going to, we recorded this and we're going to put it up on our Arkansas Alumni Association YouTube account. So uh, if you know anyone that would like to learn more about the UAPD K9 unit, you can send them that video. So they and can watch. learn some more from that. And we'll, we'll put a link on that YouTube as well to our Instagram page. Yeah. So um, you can follow us. If you have questions, you can reach out there. We can, we can get connected with you in that way as well. Yeah, because we have a few people who have um, already shown interest in maybe coming and having a demo with them. So. We love showing our dogs off. We love showing yeah. yeah. Any chance to get. All right. Well, we will wrap that up there. Thank you all for tuning in, and thank you again to the OPs and our fans.
Thank you all for your support.